And we are live. Welcome to the Snow Millionaire Secrets Global Summit. Here's your host, Dominic Chiarella. Thank you, Emily. And hello and welcome to the Millionaire Mastery Secrets. My name is Dominic Chiarella, and I am your host for this groundbreaking online event for the snow and landscaping industries. Now, today I have a real treat for you. We are in the second week of hanging out live with 10 titans of the landscape and snow industry. These men and women have and are still going to share with you one thing that they wish they had told them when they first started out in business so they could have taken their business to seven figures or more, less stress, less struggles. And really what really I enjoy about this is we're listening to their life stories and also they're giving us strategies and tips so anybody in this audience that wants to help with their own business and grow this is what we're talking about. I'm so excited to share this information with you today. Now, why have we set up this summit in this format? And I like to think that we are bringing this new technology. It isn't so much that it's new, but in our industry, we have to merge these things. The technology always flies by us. I want to merge this technology with the things that we're doing like today, virtual interviews, virtual coaching and taking these face-to-face -face things that we could do live and bring them into the virtual world. Now let's face it, if we could do this in the comforts of our home, in your car, on your laptops, in your office, and be able just to stop your day and do this, enjoy this, this is what we're trying to do is. And I'm also trying to get this in the course level also. Uh, you know yourself, is it's, it, it, cost-conscious people can you want to work with somebody that one day worth of a service and go to their place or would you like to work three months with somebody this is what we're trying to do so this it's a it's, it's gonna be a good thing is so I like to, to talk to you a little bit about the housekeeping we had some hiccups I still think it's thrilling to work in the virtual world with you even with these hurt hiccups but before I introduce this guest today I'd like to talk about the Hangout. There is an area on the bottom there that you can type in questions, comments, anything that you want to talk to uh, our, our guest and myself, and I will look periodically and they'll check with me to make sure that we can answer some of these questions throughout the interview. Now, before I introduce my guest, I'd like to talk a little bit about Frank Mariani Sr. Hello, Frank. How are you, Dominic? Thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about you. Frank, in 1973, Frank Mariani became president of Mariani Landscaper. Landscape, which was founded by your father, Vito Mariani Sr., in 1958. It began as a small residential landscape firm, and today you have over 450 employees specialized in high-end residential landscape design, construction, and maintenance. Now, from your base in Lake Bluff, Illinois, you have also have branches, and you cover a tri-state area and beyond. And also, in 2001, you established a Mariana Commercial Landscape Company. Now, this expands your opportunities in the public domain. So you're involved in public projects for such a state-funded work. Now, Mariani Landscaping has been recognized by so many. American Landscape Contract of America, American Society of Landscape Architects, Illinois Landscape Contract Associates and numerous awards for design, installation, maintenance, and, and landscape project. Now, Frank, you are past president, Illinois Landscape Contractor, and honored Man of the Year, 1994. You served as president and board member of the Mid-America Horticulture Trade Show over 10 years. You're a member of Chicago chapter of Young President Organization and currently a member of the World President Organization. In 2009, you were included in the Chicago area Entrepreneurship Hall of Fame. And on a nice personal note, you and your wife, Sherry, reside in Lake Forest and have two lovely children, Frank V, that we talked about earlier, and Alexandra Lane. Without further delay, I want to introduce you to today's guest, an associate, a dear friend, and mentor to not only me, to all of us. Frank Mariani Sr. Thank you. Thank you, Dominic. Uh, you've told everybody everything, so we might as well just have fun now. Yeah. So, 
Exactly. Thanks for including me. Uh, it, it's exciting what you're doing. Uh, it was a thrill uh, to watch some of your other uh, titans, uh, uh, in particular watching Frank Jr., who I thought he did a fabulous job um, and actually gave me some ideas uh, of where we're going to go in the future. So, um, you know, I always like to encourage people to participate in things such as this. Makes you think a little bit about the business uh, and uh, really opportunities that are always out there. And, and sometimes we get so uh, tied up in day-to-day -day activities, you don't have time to think on the bigger, bigger projects, uh, bigger ideas. So this is good, and I appreciate the opportunity. Oh, it's my pleasure, Frank. Uh, we always shared ideas, ideas over all these years. You know, uh, I always enjoy when I first met you, and uh, I always saw. I said, I'm looking at this across the table here. I'm looking at this man here with these small little index cards. And I'm going, hmm, why isn't he having this big notebook? But I know from over the years, I've learned the same little technique and just take these little notes because it's always those one or two tidbits. So uh, very, very good. Now, Frank, we had. Uh, we are come back. We come back from the same cultural background. Uh, my grandparents came from Italy, working hard, and you know I love the way your history starts with your father Vito Mariani in 1958. You know, could you tell us a little bit about you know how you grew up and what were the early days of Mariani like? Yeah, well, uh, quite frankly, the the landscape uh, part of our uh, family story. My grandfather. Uh, in the late, uh, you know, I guess about 1915, uh, came to this country and started a small nursery in, in a suburb of Chicago in Lake Forest. And um, I really grew up on that nursery. Uh, I was the oldest grandchild, uh, the oldest grandson. You know, that comes with, uh, you know, some perks. And I always enjoyed spending time with my grandfather out in the field. Um, uh, my my father worked for my grandfather at the nursery, and then uh, our my parents got divorced. My my father, who stayed very close with my grandfather, uh, started his little maintenance business. As a matter of fact, my grandfather would feed him some of the projects that he designed and built at that time. Before that was really a term, design build. And my dad started maintaining properties, and uh, you know I'd either work at the nursery, or I'd work for my dad. Uh, but uh, primarily, I, I really liked working in a nursery, and I also liked uh, they had a small garden center, uh, my grandparents did, and I enjoyed working there with my grandfather and my grandmother. So, you know, basically from the age of five, I've been involved in the green industry, and so, uh, uh, and, and I love it. You know, I, it's, it's very interesting because my dad's been gone now uh, since 73, so it's over 40 years, and... Uh, Quite frankly, I still like going to work um, almost every day. So I don't know how many people can say that. No, not many. You know, that's uh, that that is amazing. I you know, when, when when my when my dad when our father passed away, uh, we had well, we were doing my dad in '73. We did ninety thousand dollars in uh, revenue, and uh, bottom line of thirty. So my father was a hell of a lot smarter than I am, you know, producing, uh, you know, that type of, you know, 30% return. Sure. Uh, but, you know, it was, it was uh, uh, he built the business, you know, just doing what he felt was right and which was uh, ex excellent horticultural practices um, and doing those little funny things that people make, you know, they may joke about, but really the client's always right. Uh, you know, based the business uh, uh, on honesty, treating your people well, treating your clients well, and, you know, good things will happen. And, you know, we still basically live uh, with the same basic principles and, and rules. Um, you know, I'm sure occasionally we get sidelined, but, uh, you know, I think one of the reasons that we have associates that have been with the company almost as long as I've been with, it's not by accident. It's because it's a, it's a great place to work. And there's a lot of opportunity, and uh, and uh, we treat people right. So, um, you know, I, I you know I like to keep things simple, um, and that's kind of the premise of, of you know where we started. Uh, I think we had you know nine to twelve 
uh, associates, or at that time we called them employees, working for us when my father passed away. And as you mentioned, uh, you know, at Landscape, uh, you know, we're over 400 now at Nursery and uh, Mariani Nursery, which is a separate company. You know, peak they can they can run you know somewhere with 30, 40 people. And uh, at our Hampshire Farms, which is a, a, a perennial business, uh, we sell the big box stores, primarily Home Depot. Uh, between uh, growers and and our merchandisers, you know, we'll have 250 people working there. Wow. So, um, uh, you know, my this is the way I look at things. Uh, when you're in the landscape industry, you get up early put a lot of hours in. Uh, the early days, uh, basically it was seven days a week. Um, tried not to work Sundays, but that didn't always work out because quite frankly at that time, you know, it did all the proposals, did all the billing, uh, did the payroll, did everything. So it was seven days a week. Um, um, so I felt, you know what, if you're going to work that hard, might as well grow this business. Um, and, uh, you know, we have grown the business over the years so that we could have added service and uh, product to our clients. And uh, the other thing is, is that um, I found that by building a great team, it actually not only allowed us to do better work, uh, more interesting work, but it also allowed me to have some personal life because I had a great team of associates. I don't know how you keep those associates without offering them opportunity and I don't know how to offer them opportunity without growing the company. So basically we grew the company so that there would be a reason that people would stay at Mariani. It was that simple. The clients got a better level of service and we were able to keep people because they had opportunity. Um, too many times uh, I've gone to conferences and everybody is really focused in on, well, how many bodies do they have working for them? How many pieces of equipment they have? Those are not the important things. What's important is why did you buy that piece of equipment? Why did you add that one more person to a particular uh, job position? Um, does it make sense? And at the end of the day, I don't care if you're doing Five million or twenty million or a hundred million. What are you netting? That's the, that's the most important number. You know, I'm amazed. You know, I participate with Planet, do some of the Trailblaze. Uh, uh, you know, opportunities come up where I'll go with different uh, landscape companies throughout the country, and the ones that impress me the most are these companies that are doing one, two, three million dollars or even less, but they're driving somewhere fifteen to twenty percent to the bottom line. That's really impressive. That's way more important than a company that's doing $12 million and they're doing $100,000 in net, right. net profit. So, you know, we've got to keep focused on that and, and that's what we try to do here. The last few years have been tough uh, for the green industry and for industry in general, any business. I don't care what type of business you had. It's been tough. And, uh, Although things have improved, um, it's always going to be a challenge. There's going to be something. You know, right now our biggest challenge is, is finding legal uh, uh, folks that want to work in our industry. And uh, it's, but, you know, we've got different strategies. That's why we do strategic planning on an annual basis. And basically throughout the year is to come up with a, a, an A plan, a B plan, a C plan, a D plan, an E plan yeah. to tackle any of these threats and any opportunity to come up. Yeah. Um, uh, right now that labor is, is, uh, is a hot one. The other thing is, is that when you built a, a decent reputation, uh, all of our associates are, um, quite frankly, they're sought after from other, other firms, our competition, which is a compliment. Um, but uh, you know, you got to you. You have to keep your eye on the ball. Uh, I think that uh, having a robust the HR department that really focuses. One of the things we've really tried to concentrate on the last couple of years is a career path for every associate. And it's kind of interesting because in a lot of cases, um, somebody might necessarily they may not want to change their 
their job. They might be a laborer and they want to be a laborer for the rest of their career because it's what they enjoy, it's their comfort level and everything. Uh, if I've made mistakes in the past, and God knows I've made plenty, and you know some of them, but, uh, you know, I always felt that everybody was like me, and if they were labor, they want to become a, a, a sub, you know, a crew leader in training, and then a crew leader, yeah. and a supervisor, and a, a, a client representative, whatever the case may be. I thought everybody wanted to climb the ladder. That's not necessarily true. And quite frankly, I think what we want to do is make sure that everybody knows that they have an opportunity, but that opportunity is basically it's it's uh, you know the company has a responsibility for offering that opportunity. The associate has responsibility to acquire the necessary uh, job skills in order to do that job. Okay. So if you offer that and you stick to that, uh, there's really not a reason uh, that somebody shouldn't find a, their place at our company where they're comfortable and for them to have the opportunity to grow and prosper and the company grow and pros prosper as well. So, No, you're, you're correct, uh, Frank. I, I see that in your company. I see it in the other companies I go to. And when you can get this culture that you're speaking of, and uh, of one of you're building the careers of the people. We have our strategic objective. We have our vision, and that's where you come in, where I come into my company, you come into your company. They need that. They need that strength and vision, like you said, A, B, C, D, E, F plans. But offering people a career, a life in in your business, they're proud of that. Now they have a way, like you mentioned, if they want to be just be a laborer, there's nothing wrong with being the best labor, and you're going to make them the best labor. Right. If you want them to go there, they can see that path. I noticed in your organization they have that. You have an excellent woman in there, Stacy. That you could see that she's on the the, the, the higher and the, the the education that career minded, and that is a key. That is a typical key. You're proud to be working um, for for a company like yourself. You're you're proud of this, and when you're working for this, you'd be proud of that also. Well, uh, you know, I think Frank uh, Jr. hit on it uh, the other day. Um, you know, we've done a great job of attracting good people. You know, my partner, our president, Fred Wacker, uh, comes, uh, you know, came from a different industry, uh, family business, but a different industry, uh, brought his, uh, his uh, Ivy League education and his MBA, uh, and has our team, basically has given our management team, which we, we call our operating committee, many MBAs. You know, they're really focused in on what they need to do, how they need to do it, and it's different. You know, I don't have those skills, the same skills Fred has. Um, you know, we've got landscape architects here. We have CPAs here. We have uh, our friend Ala, who's sitting in the room with me, and make sure that this, who's our IT expert, uh, you know, Cheryl, who you've met many, many times, my able assistant helping us out so you know we've got layer after layer after layer of pros here and um, you know I basically came out of high school my father died the oldest of five boys and took over the business my brother John went to University of Illinois got a degree in landscape architecture and added, added a whole nother level we brought other landscape architects in. we're always trying to have the best team I think you know you look at different analogies I think about the Green Bay Packers right now they have a spectacular quarterback, I think one of the best quarterbacks that's ever played, and Aaron Rodgers. Well, they used to have a pretty good quarterback named Bart Starr, and they had a good quarterback named, uh, uh, who was the last guy, uh, Brett, Brett Favre. Uh, chances are, if they didn't change that team, if, if Bart Starr was still there or Brett Favre was still there, they wouldn't be winning much many games. Right. You always have to upgrade your team. In the same token, the thing that's beauty, uh, the beauty of our particular business versus sports, age doesn't diminish uh, your value. Right. Uh, because you can't throw the ball 100 yards anymore. It doesn't make a difference here. We're looking for that experience. Same token, it's great getting some of these young people. We have a very robust mentoring program. We have a very robust recruiting program. Um, it's very. I'm very high on hiring people. Uh, using Planet through Student Career Day, things like that. 
Uh, we're lucky to have the network of colleges that we work with and getting these young people to come in here and quite frankly challenge the old goats like myself the new ways of doing things and new approaches and to understand the younger generation. So, you know, when I stop learning um, and when I, when I say we've done it all and we're the best, I quit yeah. because I don't believe you ever uh, reach the pinnacle. If you reach the top, you know, I mean, then where's the challenge? We've got a long way to go. We're good, but we could be better. And some people say that, uh, you know, it might not be um, rational to look at things the way I do, but I'm relentless in the pursuit of perfection, and I'm not going to apologize for that. That's just the way I go about doing my business. And it's, it's you know, the business, you know, quite frankly, I, I don't know if this is good or bad. I've heard pro and con, uh, but uh, to me, you know, th this business is basically – you know, the major part of my life. I mean, it's what I do, it's who I am, and uh, it's what I like. So, um, you feel that though, Frank. Um, I, I've done some collaborative uh, projects with you, and uh, if you were there or you were not there, your culture, your value, your vision, it still permeates throughout your business. And uh, so you see the people, like I said, I talked to Stacy, I talked to Ala. You talk to the people that you have there. They are, it's not that they're a Mariani senior clone, but they are Mariani landscape culture and values. And yet I like to see that. You, you know, um, no, the vision is, is they need leaders. They need leaders in going there. They need to see someone making mistakes and trying different things because they know you are there for them. And I found it really fascinating. Like one of the things that I had was when I was doing a collaboration with them, Snow with you. Is, you talked about all the different people here. You have a, an incredible culture, a Hispanic culture there, and I'm watching them through there, and I'm going, these are your leaders. You could even see them. You're cultivating another culture, Frank, and that's this leaders I, I, they are going to be up and running. So, no, this is something that you'd be proud of. I know there's people that say this and that. Everybody says that. Uh, it's just what it is. You have to follow a good path with good values and a culture. Well, yeah, and, you know, uh, when you've got folks uh, like Frank Vena, who, you know, is a third grade friend who, who runs our uh, construction production, Ron Fiocchi with our fleet and facility, uh, Nick Voiken, right. who started on a crew who's running $20 million, where uh, he's responsible for $20 million a year in sales, uh, you know, uh, Larry Weil, who helped grow our our, uh, our maintenance division, and then decided later in, in life to, to go back to being a, a client representative. You know, it, it's hard to, to uh, top people like that. And so they understand what we're trying to do. They know what the program is. And, uh, you know, as I said, nobody, nobody's perfect. And uh, trust me, uh, that begins with me. But you know, we basically understand what we need to do. And, you know, a happy client uh, is is something that we strive for. And so, you know, typically, I would say 99% of the time, when a client is unhappy, it's, bec it, it's, it's because we, we made a mistake somewhere along the line. Right. Uh, maybe we over-promised, under-delivered, whatever the case may be. But, you know what, everybody here has carte blanche, do whatever it takes to fix it. A uh, rare, rare occasion, we'll have a client that takes advantage of that and we'll basically part ways. That's happened uh, you know, on one hand in the last 40 years. You know, uh, you know, we just, we have to admit that we make mistakes. Um, if somebody has an accident at Mariani or something, something they've done wrong, um, all they need to do is come clean say, you know, we had this problem, I made this mistake, it's no big deal. Yeah, fix Just it, fix the problem. Fix it and move on move and on. don't let it happen again right. if at all possible. That's all. So, you know, here again, keep things simple and move forward, and I think everybody understands that. Yeah. Well, that is that is a good culture. Um, I noticed that in my company and also the companies that I'm in now, I like to teach that fact is, you know, you are going to make mistakes, but go fix the problem because it's usually a client issue. Then go figure out later on what happened. 
you know, there's no point in your finger. You have to fix. Is it a system problem? Is it a people problem? Fix it because you don't want it to happen again. Well, you know, Fred. Fred introduced. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, <coughs> that ISO, uh, uh, which you're familiar with. Yes. Uh, and because uh, the companies that he was associated with before Mariani, it was a necessity. And, you know, he was his, one of the companies, Liquid Controls, make precision valves for Boeing or NASA, whatever the case may be. You had to meet these exacting, you know, demands, uh, and you had to be ISO certified. Uh, I was participating in a, a planet uh, conference up at the Aaron's uh, manufacturing plant in Wisconsin. They had adopted uh, Toyota Lean process. I came back. I told Fred. I said, "You know, it's really impressive. This is a company, uh, a, a company. I don't know if they were 50 years old or 100 years old, but it was an old company that was teetering on bankruptcy. They adopted that Lean practices. They turned the company around in a matter of months." And I was so impressed by that. I also attended a, uh, I was invited by the Department of Defense to go visit some different sites throughout the country. And one of the places I went to was Tinker Air Base in Nebraska. And next to the air base, there was a, uh, a refurbishing uh, facility. They would take all the 737 tankers, uh, the refueling tankers for the Air Force and rebuild these. They adopted lean practices too. They went from refurbishing something like 17 planes a year to over 30 in a matter of two years by adopting lean practices. So, you know, I came back, told Fred about it. He was excited. He said, well, you know, I'm very familiar with, I, with lean. Lean is just one of the segments of ISO. And if we're going to do something, let's do it all the way. Let's go for ISO certification. So, you know, by doing that, that, that you know, by the way, you stop me whenever you want because no, 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 no. my stories are always too long. No. But what, what I'm coming back to is when we do make a mistake at Mariani, what we try to do is use the ISO process for going and understanding why did the, the problem come up and what can we do to head it off the next time. And we actually, we actually document this and we have a team working on it. And it's helped eliminate a lot of a lot of mistakes and a lot of confusion. So, uh, can we do better? Yes, but uh, it's just one of the many things that we do to continue. You know, really, ISO is all about what? It's about continual improvement. Yeah. So, you know, no matter what you do, I love the fact that when I was talking this uh, major, at uh, and he was talking about uh, uh, these uh, refurbishing these airplanes, he said, you know, we found out. If you loaded this valve on the conveyor belt with your left hand, it saved a millisecond. Well, guess what? You keep adding them up, it adds up. Yeah. I mean, it's that simple. So they always were looking at ways to be more efficient and improve things. And they utilized the entire team to come up with the recommendations. One thing you, I also learned from that is that in the past, we were too fast to change based on just the current problem. Okay. When sometimes a current problem is simply because, you know, all hell's breaking loose. It's been raining for a month. Uh, you're way behind. You have people screaming at you. And, you know, to really change because of that particular circumstance may not be in your best interest. You have to look at where were you the month before, what, you know, and, and, and you know, you have to really analyze. Um, Fred has said to me many, many times, you know, you think the company is like a, a speedboat, when in fact, you know, we're much bigger than that. It's more like moving in the direction of an ocean liner. It has to be, you know, done thoughtfully. Um, I think, quite frankly, we're a little bit in between, and we need to be as agile as possible. Same token, we, we need to, you know, plan things out. So somewhere between... Uh, you know, speedboat and an ocean liner uh, gives us the flexibility and the opportunity to react to anything that can arise. Well, that's what happens, Frank, sometimes in, your, in the earlier stages of your business. You go to these seminars and you come back with full of piss and vinegar and all these chains and stuff like that. Is And then as you get bigger, you, ha you do move slowly. You have to be able to move as quick as the younger companies, the smaller companies, and you have to reinvent the wheel. 
Um, it, it is a, you know, you have to do both. But you know something, Frank, if you were a person that uh, constantly saw what was the jour, the system of the jour, the software de jour, your people, that's not your culture. Your culture is flexibility. You want to learn the best and keep on getting better, but you don't want to keep on changing and going back and forth. You make your people crazy. And that's not what your company, I know my company wasn't that way. I do see this in many smaller companies. They constantly try to grab something to go and do this new system. You know, when, when I first got involved and invited to participate in Illinois Landscape Contracts Association on the board of directors, you know, I met people uh, that were representing very large companies. And I was really impressed. They dressed the part. They talked the part. They had these beautiful brochures. They had all this procedure. They had everything. But I was also surprised to find out when I went and looked at some of their projects that, you know, quite frankly, they didn't impress me. Um, and I used to say to myself, it's great to have the appearance. It's great to have you know, the polish, I think it's very, very important. But at the end of the day, is the tree straight and is the grass mown in a straight line? It's really that simple. Yeah. It's not overcomplicate everything. You know, uh, bottom line is, um, for me, let's design something that, uh, quite frankly, is not trendy. It's more classic. Uh, that doesn't mean it couldn't be contemporary. But still, that it's you know it's not going to be the avocado uh, 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 appliance that was popular years ago, and you know may, maybe it'll come back. But I, I don't want something like that. Yeah. So we, it starts with great design, okay? It starts with you know uh, a fantastic installation team, and then uh, it ends with terrific maintenance uh, practices, and that's what we concentrate on, you know. You want to know how we're doing? I get in my car this past Sunday. I drove around to some of our projects, and as much time as I did looking at our projects, oh, by the way, and I fired off to the team. I mean, if I'm driving around on Sunday, they can at least read an email. Um, and I told them what I liked and what I didn't like, what I saw as an opportunity, and then I spent as much time looking at some of our better competitors. And I probably judge them easier than I judge our work. But still, you know, it's like a horse. You know, uh, you think about a swimmer. I think they swim faster because they're glancing over at the person in the next lane and they want to beat that person. You know, to me, this is competition and I want to beat my competition. I want our design to be better, and so I look at it and judge it in that way. I want our construction techniques to be better, so I look at it and judge it that way. And I look at our maintenance, and I do the same thing. It's always a race for me. I'm not saying that's the way everybody should do it, but for me, that's the way I do it. So, you know, if uh, the, the other day I saw a project that one of our competitors, Sunday, was doing, I thought the work looked fabulous. I sent it off to our team. I said, I suggest you go to such and such address, take a look at that project, and let me know, is every one of your projects, excuse me, is every one of your projects as good as that? And if it's not, you better step it up. So that's what we do. That's how we do it. And, um, you know, judging, what, what are we judging ourselves on here? We're judging on ourselves on revenue, and profit, and we're judging ourselves on retaining clients. You know, are they, you know, 90% plus <coughs> are renewing with us each and every year, and that includes people that have passed away. Um, are we, are we, are we judging ourselves on how our associates, what do they feel about the company? I mean, there's all different races within running a company where you can, you know, really take uh, accountability for what's going on. So. Yeah, but, but you mentioned that you looked over your shoulder. I, I do notice that, Frank. I've known you for many, many years, and you do enjoy looking at the competition. You uh, have been a person that I 
uh, see that you want to. Uh, I don't know if it beat the competition, but I have to say uh, what I see with you is that you compete with yourself first. Um, you uh, have you make yourself better. Just the way you're talking about how you're doing the ISO, you're doing you know the career development. You're constantly looking for things. I really believe that you are competing with yourself first and foremost. So you are driving that force. And sure, you add things on that other people. Hey, that's a good idea. And you told me that something that I, I did that made a good idea for you. That's the great beauty of it. But you're forging and you're going forward because you're competing with yourself. Well, let me put it to this way: one of the things that we try to do here. If a client calls up and said, look, we're absolutely thrilled, I ask our team leaders, do me a favor, please go look in that project before you start giving out kudos. Because although the client may be happy, and by the way, we definitely want who's ever associated with the job to know the client's happy. But it still may not be up to our standards. So it can be, look, Jimmy. Mrs. Jones is extremely happy. And by the way, on the social side of the business equation, you're doing a great job. Right. But you know what? I saw the edging. I saw the pruning. That's a, there's, we need to improve here and here and here and here. So it's great to give somebody a pat on the back, but make sure that they're being recognized for what they truly are doing right and that they're, they're getting an opportunity to correct what they're not doing right. It, it's really that simple. Um, you know, uh, one of the, you know, uh, we're lucky in this industry, especially on the residential end, that relationships still count. You know, I've had so many good, good friends that work for advertising companies, work for big corporations, uh, Fortune, and relationships don't count. For example, right now when we meet with the buyer from Home Depot for our at Hampshire Farms. You meet in a glass room at their headquarters. You can't take them for coffee, God forbid, for a beer. Uh, you can't take them to dinner because that's looked upon as you know, collusion or whatever the case may be. Um, that's sad to me because, yeah. you know, I like the fact of, of going out for a drink with a client, playing around to golf with them, uh, you know, and because I'm a social animal. That's what I like to do. That's what I do. The problem with that is it puts a tremendous amount of pressure on me personally because you know I go I go to dinner I don't care where I'm at inevitably there's going to be a client or somebody that has a relationship with Mariani landscape and so you always got to watch what you're doing what you're saying all that kind of stuff and it that can be a little daunting and, and overwhelming at times but it's what I love to do um, and Bottom line for us is we really don't have clients. They're really, we build relationships. 95 plus percent turn out to be great friends. Um, there are some clients that don't want that type of personal relationship, which is absolutely fine. But when you do have the personal relationship, um, I think, quite frankly, it makes us, we're on our toes even more. We don't want to, not only do you not want to let a client down, but do you really want to let a friend down? So, uh, for example, yesterday we participate. I participated in a uh, uh, a charity event uh, for a charity we started over 25 years ago. Uh, it's a Children's Bureau of Bone Foundation, and so last week I I looked at the list of everybody that's going to be at the golf outing. I picked out which ones are clients. I sent our team a note saying, "This job, this job." This job, I'm going to be seeing these people at outing. Let's step it up this week, even a little layer more. Yeah, now, ideally, I'd like to be able to count on those projects being perfect, but you know, maybe that's not realistic. So you're always so anyway. Having that personal relationship, I think it benefits us, and I think it benefits the client, and it holds us to a higher standard. So. Um, it, you know, I know a lot of people in this industry that judge themselves basically on the bottom line. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. I just want, I just think we want a little bit more. Yeah. You know, we want to be known as a leader. Uh, we want to be known as, you know, something I had to get my arms around. 
they used to, I, I, I remember this maybe 20 years ago, a client came up to me, he said, you know, I was at a cocktail party on Thursday night, and uh, you were the topic of discussion, Frank. I said, oh, great. I know we're too expensive. And he laughed. He said, no. He said, you're expensive, but you, you're the best. And I said, that, that's a very interesting thing. You know, I learned something from that conversation. Uh, because, you know, I always assumed that everybody just felt, you know, a lot of people, if they had one complaint, were too expensive. But, I, again, we're not losing many projects. So, obviously, they must feel there's value there. Uh, but it, it demands that we keep raising the bar all the time. Because i got to tell you something. One thing that I have noticed by going out and seeing what these other companies are doing, there are a bunch of smaller companies, some of them, you know, associates that used to work at Mariani have started their own business, and that's what this country is all about. And their product is pretty damn good. And, uh, you know, when they're first growing, they don't have the overhead that we have. Yeah. They will well, have it. Well, the fact they can be pretty, you know, agile, yeah. and, 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 and they can offer sometimes a better price. And so we always need to be raising the bar so that everybody is trying to chase us. Well, I had a question that was in another uh, interview, Frank, just about that. And they were saying how, you know, uh, what, a, what the essence was is, like, well, how do you compete with these guys? They're so big. They could buy all this salt. They could do all these things. I, I actually put that in the comment. There is that, that, that notion. When you have some good be, uh, work ethics, like you mentioned, they're sharp out there. Is they're probably more agile. They're cheaper. They're faster, and they didn't realize the the person asking the question didn't realize they're coming. You know, yes, you have more buying power, but do you have the more the agility and to be able to satisfy the client, which is really the result of what you're talking about? Uh, uh, you know, uh, our we do as you know we do some commercial maintenance work. And snow falls into that too. Right. Um, I'm. Trust me, I'm not smart enough to compete on price only basis. Nor do I want to. Um, you know what we've done on the residential side of the business has been able to to demonstrate uh, what we feel is. Uh, uh, better design, um, and the other side of the equation is we invest a lot of money into, uh, you know, the, those that represent the clients. Our client representatives on the maintenance side, which other people call account managers, I like the term client representative because that's what they're doing, and on the design and design build side, we call them our design directors or landscape architects that, that communicate with the client. Um, what we demand from our team is that they're basically available for those clients and they are doing their best to drive, whether it's design or installation or maintenance, to drive value and to really be that client's representative, to understand why a client should use concrete versus asphalt versus granite. And to, you know, there are appropriate times when you go to a ball game, although this is changing, there's appropriate time to have a hot dog and a beer, and there's appropriate time to have lobster and champagne. You know, we're the professional. We should be there recommending the right choices at the for the right time, for the right budget, for the right situation. Right. Um, in that residential side, you know, it might be a little easier to do than on the commercial side, although I think the best commercial companies – are doing the same thing. They're going on to a property, they're looking at that property, and they're they're just figuring out different ways where they can add value, whether it's fewer mowings, whether it's more uh, uh, natural areas, uh, better for the environment, but also reducing the, the need for mowing and fertilizer, pesticide, etc. There's also there's always different things that you can be doing to drive value for that client. Um, you do I just, I'm, I'm just happy that for us it's the residential side because yeah. typically, you know, I've got a saying here at Mariani, every single project 
needs a flat of Pat Cassandra. And what I mean by that is that I think sometimes we look up at the stars in the sky instead of looking at every square foot of our client's property and recognizing that a rabbit dug up a little of the pack of sand or the ground cover over here and by the way there's a dead tree right in front of you or quite frankly this was a bed that was sunny when it was installed 20 years ago now the tree's gone it's a shady and now it's a shady uh, setting so you need to change the plant so there's opportunity 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 and if you're at a project in June you can go back in July and there's more sales to be had. And by the way, it's not the sale that I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is it is that project the best that it can possibly be. If you leave, God forbid you have a dead plant and you haven't made a recommendation to replace it, let alone an upgrade. You know, how many over the years, you've seen this out on the East Coast, little bungalows up and down some of the smaller communities and you can't even see, you can't get to the front front door. Sometimes you can't even see see it because the taxes or the junipers have grown to such a large size. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it your responsibility, my responsibility, to knock on the door, <coughs> excuse me, and tell the client, hey, it's time we redid the front foundation. Right. Opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. Well, that's where you talk about the differences that, you know, the the world has changed a bit, and we have some struggles doing businesses. I tend to believe more what you're saying is there is always opportunities. Now, just because you're not going to do the stellar, you know, the big jobs now, is you're going to go back to the basics. But there is opportunity at every turn. But you better be focused on it. And I think that's probably what you're talking about, Frank, because you instill that, and you, I, I know that you have education programs, the same thing that does that for you that helps these people recognize this stuff. Because you're a natural. Um, there's a difference than you know, someone else that may not recognize it and needs that mentoring, that help. Well, let, let's, let, let's look at this. One of the things that we ask our client representative on maintenance side of, maintenance side of the business is you know, every year we go for a renewal you know, for the following year. And what that allows us to do is look at our job costing. Do we need to adjust the hours or materials or anything like that? Um, and would you rather go meet with Mrs. Jones if the only time you're going to see her is that once a year for the renewal? Or is it better once a month at minimum to knock on the door, or pick up the phone, and ask Mrs. Jones, how are we doing? Right. You know, if you take the time for that monthly call, or in some cases it's weekly, when you go to sell that renewal for the next year, you know, you have a relationship. Right. You're satisfied right. though. Well, it, the other thing is, it's the same thing. Uh, today at 4 o'clock, I'm meeting a client who happens to be, a, now I've developed a great relationship and friendship with him as a golf buddy. But... You know, he was very particular about his property, but, you know, quite frankly, we had done the backyard. Uh, we've had so much flooding this year. It was really, it didn't look great. Front yard was done by somebody else and never like that. Surprise, surprise. So I met with him and, uh, and I said, look, I'm going to have my team do a design for your entire yard. He said, well, you know, I think it looks great. I said, well, good. I mean, you're a retired uh, uh, CEO of a company. I'm, I'm in the landscape industry. It looks terrible. We're going to do a plan. He said, okay. And uh, so we did a plan, and I met with him. And he said, well, here's I, I talked it over with my wife. Here's $200,000. Do whatever you want to do. He said, plus, I'm going to Cape Cod for a month. I want you to get it done while I'm gone. And he gave us card blanche, and he goes, so I'm meeting today at 4. He got home last night, and he just sent me a message, wow, it's fabulous. And by the way, I knew it was fabulous. Kerry and, and, and Frank and our team did a fabulous job. But, you know, had to plant that seed with the client. I'm not so sure, even though our Sherry, who's the client rep on this project, 
she has a great relationship with Mr. and Mrs. I'm not sure that she would have been able to plant that seed because um, maybe it was a little bit more, uh, but I could do it. So I also like it when some of our associates come to me and say, hey, Frank, I've been trying to get Mrs. So-and-so, Mr. So-and-so to do something. Quite frankly, I really think it needs to be done, but, uh, you know, I, I need your help to initiate that, that call. And so I'm happy to do that. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Well, that, that's then, uh, again, it comes in with the leadership. Uh, I think that uh, they can look up to you, Frank, with that. I, I, that's a, uh, I, I like to point out that's a cultural thing. You're accessible. You want to teach people. They know that you're not going to come out and give them a really a back slap. You know, like, uh, again, an egotistic back slap. You're a humble man. But, you're, you know, aggressive, but you're humble. So that's, a, that's a, definitely a cult, cultural thing that you have in your business. You know, you can come to you and say, Frank, I need help. You you've need been in help. this. You you've been in this business a long time, Don Dominic. Yes. So, uh, if in this, I might even err on the, on the wrong side of this, but I really don't like to ask anybody to do something that that I wouldn't do. And so, as a matter of fact, there's been a lot of calls on weekends and things like that where I don't even ask an associate to go with me because I want them, you know, it's my company. Uh, I'll just go make the call and let them enjoy their family. And I don't know if that's right or that's wrong or anything, but, you know, the we ask a lot from every associate at Mariani. So, you know, um, you know one thing I've learned over the years is that to thank somebody, uh, you know, we, we, you know, we've really been focusing lately, for example, on safety. And so I just got a email yesterday from our HR department and it showed, and it actually is on our inner, uh, and our, uh, uh, Mariani net here in house. And it showed the four or five recipients of safety awards. You know, one got a 50 inch TV or whatever the, Case. You know, somebody else got a uh, $250 uh, gift certificate uh, and right on down the line. Um, sometimes it's simply a pat on the back and that a boy, uh, but it's really important that we show our appreciation to our associates. Yeah. And uh, that's why we do town hall meetings um, and, and different things. The last couple of years, you know, profit wasn't really where it should have been. Uh, but, you know, I mean, obviously we're doing pretty well, but, you know, we stopped some of those programs and, you know, we decided, you know, that's, that's the wrong thing to do. You know, you've got to, you've got to put money where it's, uh, where it's, where, where you need to put it, uh, to reward people. And you have to, you have to have a recognition. Also, it's a great idea, you know, to not only recognize that, that individual that works for you, but their spouse, you know, he or she. Uh, because you know they're they're allowing that associate to be here whenever they need to be here, and uh, yes. you know it, it can be a lot of hours at certain times of the year. Sure, sure, sure. No, you're you're correct, Frank. Uh, but your uh, nice thing is that you're you're given these these recognitions, um, and the, the where they stay there is your foundation. You know they have a they have a career. They know there's a career there. They know that you're going to be growing in the future. Your son. They know your son's going to be there. You're going to you're grooming him. You're helping him. He's going to take the Marianne to the future. That's powerful stuff. That's a culture of uh, giving back to these employees, making sure that they have a life, having them have a life, they can have a family life. So that health of your business extremely important. You know, you mentioned this a little tidbit way back when about you go to these uh, places and they puff their chests out and saying. I'm 10 million, I'm this, I got four truck. This is how big mine is. It's really the health of the company and the health of the people of the company. And you focus on that. It's one of the uh, characters I have to compliment you on. You focus on your employees. And that's one of the biggest successes that you have in your in Mariani landscaping. You're, you're, hands down, you are quality out there in the field. You know, and you, con you can see it. You're constantly striving for that. But you also internally... Frank, you have something powerful going on, and that's the people's 
lives in your hands, and you respect that. I, I, I want to compliment you on that. Well, we have, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, companies. Um, that they don't. They're not crazy about the idea of a husband, a wife, or two brothers, or two sisters, or uh, you know, working at the same form, uh, same same firm. You know, here we have Frank Vena, as I've mentioned before, running our construction department. His wife Tammy is in our accounting department, and now their son, who also happens to be my godson. Is is heading up the uh, uh, maintenance, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, production side of maintenance. All three of them are absolutely fabulous uh, 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 associates at Mariani. All three of them are superstars, in in my opinion. Um, but what's exciting to me about that? You mentioned uh, Frank Jr. You know, I I enjoyed. I did not prep him for his interview with you. Uh, let him do it himself. I thought he did an outstanding job. Uh, the fact that uh, you know he pointed out that uh, he likes learning certain things from me. He likes learning other things from Fred and from some of the other uh, uh, associates at Mariani and other managers. Um, you know, I was happy to hear that because I think it's very important. I mean, you know, if he was my clone, that would be a little sad. Because you know he's got his own mountains to climb. He has his own challenges, uh, and I'm sure he can do a better job. Well, it's the same thing now with uh, young Todd, the young Mr. Vena. You know he's got things. He learned a hell of a lot from his dad and from his mom, and maybe from me too and Fred. But you know what? He's going to do things his own way, and that's going to make us a better company. That's the beauty so, of this, Fred. That's the beauty of this. Because. There's still, still cultural foundations. There's still, you know, you talk old school and new school. There's no old school. This it's another form of communication. That's what makes it exciting. I enjoyed so much talking to your son because you could see such, you know, a, you know, potential. And it's not a likely story. It's your third generation, Frank. You know, hands down, it's not a, a common thing at all. So well, but, you know, it 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 at this company. Um, I don't think the Mariani name is the driving force here. It's having, you know, somebody like Lee Keaton, who we picked up, uh, I don't know, four years ago or three years ago, whatever the case may be, who's now heading up our, uh, uh, on the, on the uh, construction side of business, he's heading up those sales for the design for the construction. He's, uh, you know, I've met him several times at different uh, uh, industry events, primarily the Mid-Am, the Mid-Am Horticulture Show down in Chicago in the winter, which I was on the board for several years. But, you know, he had, he was involved with building, uh, uh, doing the renovation of uh, Soldier Field, where the Bears play, and uh, some of the areas around Millennium Park. And he talked about dealing with the different unions and dealing with the city of Chicago, and he had a cool demeanor. Which you know, if it was me and Frank Vena, we probably would have been thrown in jail trying to to go through all these hoops. But you know, I said you know to myself, I said I would love to have somebody like this working at a firm. And uh, sure, uh, you know, he ends up applying for a job, and it's it's a fantastic relationship. He's got a lot to teach. I can, he's in the office right next to me. I listen to him mentoring some of the new young project managers and some of the new young design directors and some of the old goats around here and he's spectacular so the same way that Frank Vena does that with the construction department same thing Nick Boykin does it same way Kerry does it with our designers um, so you know you think about it right now uh, Frank mentioned you know education you know I went from high school to my dad dying to running this company um, I took classes for Spanish, I took classes for business, I took classes for horticulture, I took classes for design at the local uh, uh, junior colleges around the area, participated in anything I could get from ILCA or at that time ALCA, and, you know, uh, and then sought out different industry leaders. I mean, you know, you think about 
the Brickman Company, you think about Valley Crest, you think about Dam Guard, you think about Sinistad. Some of the companies I hear, some of them are gone. But, you know, to me, why reinvent the wheel? Just take the best practices of all these different companies and try to incorporate them. You know, inevitably, when I'm asked to go consult or speak, at a, you know, everybody raises their hand and says, well, you know, I can't compete against uh, Brickman. You know, they're just, they're just too cheap. I said, you know, you know what, uh, I think you need to revisit that comment. Quite frankly, you know, it's been widely uh, talked about, and there's no secrets as far as how profitable they've actually been. So I wouldn't call them cheap. What I would say is they've figured out a recipe that works where they can give a competitive price and still drive 10 to 16% bottom line profit. So you need to figure out how to scramble those eggs a little better yes. than they do, and then you can compete against them. So, you know, um, I've, every single company that I've been associated with, you know, I think I've learned something. Every single time I've gone to a green industry function or a regular, that's why I got involved with Young Presidents Organization and then, since I'm not young anymore, in the World Presidents Organization, is because business is business is business. And you can always go to a, a program, seminar, uh, have an opportunity for a one-to-one -one chat and learn something that should make your company a little bit better. Yeah. Sometimes you learn at a seminar, you learn one thing, you shouldn't have gone to that seminar because it was worthless. But, you know, I can count the thousands of times I've participated on one hand, the ones that I didn't walk away with one nugget that I put on my little index card and can think about it and see how we could incorporate it into what we're doing at Mariani. Mm -hmm. So uh, the trouble is, and that's why I don't use a big pad of paper, Dominic, is because sometimes you come home with 700 ideas. Yeah. Chances are, you know, when my team used to watch me pull out that, they they would glaze over and say, oh, here we go. He's yeah. going to change the whole damn company, and we don't have the time, nor do we need to do that. So yeah. they were right. I was wrong. I'm trying to get smaller and smaller cards and just a couple great ideas, and that's it. Wow. Great stuff today, young man. Uh, we could talk forever. We're coming up on the hour here. And, uh, you know, Frank, there's so much. I'm going to write some stuff later on. But uh, thank you for uh, being part of this and, you know, showing us a side of you that is uh, human. It's family. It's the culture. All those things and how you are a true force. And your vision really has made this some, uh, possible. And you mentioned, Frank, Mary, uh, this, is, this Marianne landscape is not the name. You are exactly correct. It's what they see, but it's not. It's what's underneath that counts. And that's what you gave us today. So I... I appreciate uh, this uh, time with you today. We really do. And also Thank your you, son. You're Thank you very much, and I, and I look forward to watching uh, the other Titans. Great. Okay, um, Dominic. Thanks, thanks a lot. Well, I uh, want to say that today this is the Snow Millionaire uh, Secrets, and uh, if you have uh, comments, please put them on the bottom. Put the questions and answers, and we'll be able to uh, get back to you. Frank, is there some way if uh, someone wanted to talk to you, uh, email you, or... Something yeah. that I know you're busy. No, no problem. I, uh, F. Mariani at marianilandscape.com. Okay. Well, thank you again. Um, thank you, uh, Frank. Your team over there has been great. My team has been helping them out, and it's great to work with them. And tomorrow we're going to be joined by a, a, a very good guest. Uh, Frank, you also know him. Juan Torres, top, Terrific. top arborist in a tr and, a, and a great trainer, great, very multicultural person and uh, thank you for uh, attending so uh, ciao ciao take care Dominic thank you thank you Frank